India's move to enter into a commercial contract with Canada for supply of 3,000 tons of uranium over five years will help achieve continuous and sustained power generation and higher plant load factor of nuclear power plants in the country. Canada is the third country to supply uranium to India after Russia and Kazakhstan. Nuclear scientist Rajiv Nayan explained the nuances and significance of the deal in an exclusive interview with NNIS. Look, India is going to expand its nuclear energy base. It is going to add nuclear energy in its energy mix. So because of that, definitely India will have to need, India will need uh, fuel, India will need uranium. And its reactor, all the reactors are pressurized heavy water reactors. So these reactors would require natural uranium. So this deal will provide fuel to all the reactors which India is planning or envisaging to add to its nuclear energy basket. So this is the immediate benefit. And it is expected that India is going to have at least 25 nuclear reactors in the next four to five years. Rajiv said the deal comes at the end of two years of protracted negotiations that followed the 2013 civil nuclear deal between the countries. Canada, among the world's largest producers of uranium, played a key role in India's nuclear evolution, having supplied the first Indian reactor Cyrus in 1954. Look, this deal is significant because of several reasons. First, as you rightly pointed out, this deal signifies continuity in the Indian government. This deal could become possible because of three major developments or three reasons. First, there was something called Indo-US nuclear deal of 2005. The signed by then Prime Minister Manmohan Singh and then President George Bush. Second, in 2008, there was an exemption made in the guidelines of nuclear suppliers group. Third development which took place was the general agreement signed between India and Canada about three to four years ago. Now government of India and the government of Canada are no longer the parties. The parties are Department of Atomic Energy and Comecon. So they have to work out further details so that uranium reaches Indian reactors. There was a degree of factual uncertainty. There was a degree of inter legal interpretation. What we called peaceful nuclear explosion was called bomb testing by Western countries. We did not ag agree to that. At that time, it was a general practice to have peaceful nuclear explosion. Countries were doing it. Actually, the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty restricted it, banned it. But by then, several countries had done several peaceful nuclear explosions. India was not a signatory of peaceful nuclear, of nuclear non-proliferation treaty. So it said that it is not legally bound to observe what the members of the nuclear non-proliferation treaty are doing. The nuclear scientist said India has 21 operational nuclear reactors and six under construction which use uranium as a fuel. The nuclear component of India's energy production is currently under 3% at 6,000 megawatts. By 2032, India expects to have 45,000 megawatts of nuclear capacity, provided it has assured uranium fuel supplies. At a press conference, Prime Minister Narendra Modi described uranium as not just mineral, but an article of faith and an effort to save the world from climate change which are generally in the range of 1000 megawatt reactor to 1650 megawatt reactors. This is the range. Some of the reactors will be using natural uranium, some of the reactors will be using low enriched uranium. So this is the boiling water reactors will be using low enriched uranium. Kudan Kulam is, going, is using uh, low enriched uranium, but many pressurized heavy water reactors will be using natural uranium. So we are importing both kinds of uh, uh, uranium from the world. We have imported low enriched uranium from Russia and natural uranium also from Russia. We have imported natural uranium from France. Areva has supplied it. Powered by NNIS.